Welcome to Three Things. Our guest tonight. You know, there's that scene in the movie Swingers. I'm not sure if everyone here is familiar with the movie Swingers, but the character Mikey, who's the main character in that movie, played by John Favreau, he's trying to explain being in the entertainment business to the beautiful woman at the bar and she sort of gets that he doesn't have his shit together and starts asking him questions and he says i don't quite have west coast representation yet well i personally have never felt like that after we met this person in 2018 <laughs> i've always felt like we've had west coast rep representation he wore the og 108 shirt on mlb network and has consistently rocked and promoted the 108 gear at spring training in arizona and in cali where he lives he's 108ing personified i'd like to welcome Scott Garcia to three things. Scott, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Beef. Thanks for having me. Uh, hell of an idea. You guys reached out to me. I was absolutely 100% all in on this. So glad to be uh, shit, talking to you guys live in person. You can't be in person, so it's the next best thing. But man, pumped. Hopefully, we can get some into some baseball action and be even better. Yeah, no kidding. I see you're rocking the 805 shirt. We had yeah. the 805 during one of our podcasts uh, during the summer, right? My Sox summer. You, 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 yeah, yeah. you bought the 805 for us. Yeah, yeah. we've had that. It's a fire. It's Firestone, right? Yeah, yeah. The brewery's uh, maybe about a half hour from my house, so yeah, we we visit it frequently. We have a tap room and uh, some bomb food there too. So, you know, wife always go up there and tear up some good food and drink all their beers. Yeah, they have 805 is like the most popular one, but. They have a good one you guys will probably like. It's called Mind Haze. It's kind of like a hazy. I know you guys are big hazy fans. So, Woo! Love the hazy. delicious. You probably seen me post some pictures in the past drinking. It's some bomb stuff. I love but, the hazies, but the problem with the hazies is I drink so many of them, then I get just a ridiculous hangover. And so I, I got to be careful when I get in on the hazy. Yeah, you get hazy. Moderations, moderations. Yeah, I usually like start strong with those and then switch it up. I don't know. That's yeah, a good idea. The right formula. <laughs> 805 is uh, we just moved recently. Yeah, we uh, we were originally from down south, like close to Angel Stadium, and me and my wife moved up here once we had a little baby uh, last year, so we moved closer to her mom up there, like Central Coast, Pismo Beach area. Nice. Oh, you're in Pismo? Yeah, we're like 10 minutes from Pismo, yeah. We're like the next city uh, down from it, so we're real close. Nice. Where, where were you before, though? You were you said by Angel Stadium, but what like what area? Uh, I grew up in like Orange County and Bray and Fullerton area. Okay. Familiar with that. You, you got roots over there in Southern California, Huntington Beach and all that, huh? You always talk about those, those beautiful days. <laughs> no, yeah, I worked, I, I, I lived in uh, HB and then yeah. I, uh, I worked in Cerritos. So like I kind of oh, bombed shit. through that whole area. Okay. Yeah, I grew up all over my whole life and we just, I said, fuck it. And we moved up here to be close with my wife and her family. So. Oh, dude, Pismo is awesome, though. Yeah, it's way, way more chill, slower paced. Everybody's way different. <laughs> all in town. Yeah, I think it's better to raise a kid up here than the mean streets of LA down there. So, oh, that ain't LA, though. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm now, hey, uh, beef. Bef before we even move forward, I, I want to point out something that you left out when we were trying to make Scott blush. He was also an original attendee to the Sox Fest after party at Bader Brown. Yes, he right. was. Yeah, and that's why I said we met, we met him in 2018 because we did actually meet, physically meet. So, you know, yeah. some of these people across the country, we haven't met all of them, but Scott is someone we have met. Yeah, I was, I was, I was blessed uh, to meet all you guys for a quick little second. I mean, I was like a social butterfly. Me and the wife were over there flying around trying to meet everybody. Yeah, I ended up getting hammered, and we ended up at White Castle the other the night. It was all bad. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bribe, we had to bribe the Uber. We bribed the Uber driver for a uh, for a couple of trade cases or sliders of the trade case. I broke her off some to take us through on the way back to the hotel. But yeah, we uh, we had a good ass time, man. And I was but we haven't been out there since. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed with this Corona shit ends. That me and my wife are planning on coming out in September, guys. So I'd love to. Hell yeah, that'd be awesome. 108 in person. Truth be told, Scott, we owe you a trip to spring training. So I think oh, that's the order we got to go in, right? We got to come and meet you out there. We just haven't been able to line it up yet. Teresi and I both have like tough work schedules during yeah. spring training, so it's hard for us. But we got to figure something out. I mean, fuck it, man. Like it, we've been deprived of so much baseball this year, man. <laughs> I want every fucking game next year. Like I, I want every spring training game included. Hey, it. Like technically, I'm probably at least, I've seen the White Sox more recent than you guys have. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> I went up there right before they right before they they nixed the rest of the spring training. We just came back from it, so 
So man, yeah, that was actually part of my question. I was going to say, uh, man, the question I had in mind was, was in regards to the actual spring training offer. I think I threw it out to you guys one of your first Sunday soap questions as I was trying to get you guys all to come out and meet up. So man, that would be awesome if we can make that happen. I know everybody else would be down a lot of the other uh, 108ers and some of you guys close, like Mr. Han, I know Pete will definitely be out there if we get that going. And sure. uh, shit, Gobbles Jim, Bobbles Jim, and Uncle Rico all in one. Yeah. <laughs> He's moving out there, Scott. I don't know. I know. You know that. Yeah, we went to, I went when we were there, I, we actually went to dinner one night and had a couple of drinks and uh chilled for a little bit. We caught up. Uh yeah, and then the year prior to that, his whole family was out there, but he was telling me he was house shopping while he was working. Yeah, they, they bought a house and they'll be out there pretty soon. And uh nice. yeah, he, and supposedly uh, the deal is if we get him the bobbleheads and go pick them up for him, uh we get a free place to stay for spring training. So, oh man. Uh, I don't know if that works out very well when I bring in the uh, the brothers and <laughs> I bring in Wally money. So it might get a little, a little hectic. Oh yeah, Shay, I can't forget out my boy Big Sexy. I have to, I have to have a son drink with him. That's gotta happen. I was so so if thing if thing two is is are we gonna come out to spring training? I think we gotta okay, dive a little to deeper. Gotta dive a little deeper and say like, let's say we Airbnb and we got a big ass house. Who who is not allowed in the house? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm ready to mix up with any of you guys, but man, I would say Wally's probably the questionable. Uh, <laughs> the he definitely goes hard in the paint, like Carmelo. <laughs> like I mean, like, Wally got to put Wally got to put the deposit down on that place. <laughs> yeah, right, you still got to put the cash deposit down. I'm going to have to put out his like name or something. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Wally goes hard in the taint. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if Frank Thomas comes, comes through the door with a big old jar of eugenics? Are we going to let him in? I don't, I don't know if I feel comfortable. <laughs> oh, man, Frank, that's my boy. <laughs> I love I Frank. Have, I love yeah, Frank. Yeah. I just – I don't know I gotta, if I want, want him that, you know. <laughs> That in on everything. Yeah, he's walking in like J-Mac, man. I'm cool. I don't know. We're gonna tell Frank to check the new jigs at the door. <laughs> Scott, he went live. He went live on Instagram the other day, and I just happened to catch it. Yeah. And, like, he was taking questions from people, and it was – Wait, wait. Bunch of dudes. J-Mac, right? Not Frank. J-Mac or Frank? J-Mac, yeah, <laughs> not Frank. Not, yeah, oh, J-Mac. <laughs> but so J-Mac's, like, working out or doing whatever, and he's just answering questions. And this guy shows up and he's just the dude like junk, like just sitting there. And Jay Mac's like, oh man, shut that shit off. Almost ruined my day. All right, I'm done taking questions. And <laughs> kind of ended right there. Yeah, he's killing it. Uh, if, hey, Big yeah, Frank came good. through, man, that would, that would be something special. I got I got pretty fucked up with Frank one time not too long ago. Actually, it was a long time ago. 2013 when he was launching that Big Hurt Beer uh, the garbage yep. that he came out with. But... <laughs> Uh, I don't know, out there, you guys have binnies and whatnot. I don't know if you have a BevMo. Out here, we have BevMo. It's kind of like a... Yeah. Yeah, we have BevMo out here, and they had a holiday uh, beer festival, and, like, they listed... I'm like, oh, cool. It was, like, $40, all you can drink with the cup. You can sample all, like, over 100 different kind of uh, brewery representatives. So me and my buddy were all in on that. We went there. I went, and I saw, like, the list of the, the flyer. It said Big Hurt Beer was going to be there. I'm like, oh, fuck it. I wear my wife or my Thomas jersey just in case. So, man, as soon as we walked up to the door to pay entrance to get in, they hand my cup, and, like, his booth is right when you walk in. And he was already, <laughs> was already kind of three sheets of the wind by then already. But <laughs> I just stood up. He's like, hey! He's like, yeah! Big He's like, come over! So me and my buddy mobbed over there. We, man, I crushed so many Big Hurt beers with him, and then we were just around together. He's like, come on, let's go try everything else. So we walked around, but, uh, yeah, it's a long story short. We chopped it up with him for a good like hour. Got pretty tossed with him. And they had a the funny part is they had a a breathalyzer before you leave. You could find out what you were gonna blow, what your reading was. And I, like I said, I was pretty fucked up. And I, I think I blew. It was like a point one two uh, something, one two zero or something like that. He's way past me, so he was way fucked up. He was dancing to big. I love it when they call me Big Pop. <laughs> This is like he had a beer in one hand and like rocking it up and down. If I find some pictures, man, I'll have to post them later. But I took a couple of to sign the jersey for me. But it was a hell of a story. Oh man, that's dope. 
You wonder if he did that at every event he had to do. Because if he's doing that event all the way on the West Coast, he's probably doing that shit all throughout the country. I don't know. I just, I just thought I was fucking on a whim. Like, man, maybe he'll be there. I don't know. We'll see. So I, I went in my White Sox jersey and fit it right. And there's the sure shit, there he was. But man, I was like, like one of the best days of my life, in spite of uh, having my baby, my marriage day probably is getting fucked up with Dick Frank. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. And no one, no one out here really knew who he was. He was dressed in like regular clothes. Maybe like some real hardcore baseball fans knew who he was. But I mean, he was just dressed in regular casual clothes, just drinking, sipping, and he had a little, little dime piece girl, girl with his big hurt beer shirt on, a low cut top. I was like, oh, cool. He was pouring beers for everybody. So it was cool. Now, when you said regular clothes, did he have like Z Cap Ricci's on or some like throwback <laughs> shit? You know, like. <laughs> and it was before his uh, MVP line with uh, Mo Vaughn that he's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I support everything he does, but I don't know about that. <laughs> I need to get one of those shirts. I was looking at them online, and they're so ridiculous, but I think I, I want a couple shirts like that. They're expensive. They're expensive. Yeah, they're, pri- they're very pricey. Yeah. They You're look have a couple, couple bills at least, but some of the patterns look like it's shit. You're trying to apply for the Tiger King like my hat over here. Look at that limited. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't know, man. That might have been the second thing. I didn't know we had a question, but we just had stories. That, that's really good. No, the, the second that's thing good. was spring training. The second thing was spring oh, training. Oh, going down to spring training. Yeah. Okay. It just developed. For real, like, that, that was my question. Like I said, I was just kind of put bring it fresh into your guys' minds and see if we can get it happening next year. I mean, this year, who knows if we're actually going to have – hopefully it looks like we're going to have baseball, but to what capacity, who the hell knows? Dreezy, I, I okay, so we have 108 house. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, the no, like real world, but the one away. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I love the guy, but I'm not, not sure. I'm a, I'm gonna let Billy Wire's winery base cup in. <laughs> I don't know. I'm he's, he's a questionable. Like Pierre and Zach, guy. they're welcome. They're weird, but they can come. <laughs> Billy Wire's, I'm not sure. He's my guy, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I, like I don't know what he would be like for like a full weekend on his own. What kind of shit would go down? I assume we wake up in the morning and out in the pool, he's out there completely naked, just floating in the pool. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what I envision. Yeah, Arizona's off the chain, man. I mean, my sock cover knows. There's a lot of shit to get into and a lot of fun to be had. There's, uh, man, I've been going since like 2002 when they played out in Tucson with my dad. I never missed a year since. So if I go that much, I know you guys are going to love that shit. It's out of control. It started as like a dad and son type deal, and then it transferred to be all my, me and all my boys would go out there and just rage, and then now it's a family deal, but a little bit of rage mixed in. What, hey, where were your stops when you went out there, like with your with with your boys when it was before the family stuff? Like where where was, was the where's the peak bar that oh, you were hitting? Is, is the wife in bed? I don't know. If I can disclose all this now. Uh, <laughs> No, there's a there's a strip club that we frequently visited out there a lot. It's called because uh, my one of my best friends is an Angel fan. So he's a ticket holder, and I go to shitload of games with them and tailgate and do my thing down there with them. But so we stayed kind of close to Tempe a lot uh, back in the day. Now I kind of stay closer to Glendale where the White Sox and Dodgers place. So it's more convenient. But there's a lot of strip clubs in the Tempe area with the all the ASU uh, campus and all the bars oh, yeah. down that street. So. We pretty much live right there, especially during St. Patrick's Day week. That was like our old main week to go back in the day when we were uh, when we were all going there deep as a crew. So yeah, there's plenty plenty of bars in that area. Uh, like I said, strip clubs. I don't know. There's casinos. I know you guys like to gamble. There's casinos up the ass out there <laughs> for sure. We can go to my Sox Summers old stomping grounds. Go see Alice Cooper's town and get a. I'm gonna say, hey, that would be a good thing we should do. We need Matt Donaldson to go and try to take down the big unit and see if he can close take down. I don't know if you guys know the big units, like I think it's a 22 or 24 inch hot dog that they sell there. Yeah. <laughs> it's closed down though. They closed down this no. year. No <laughs> shit. Oh, yeah. heartbreak. We'll just go to Alice Cooper's house. We'll just go to his yeah, house. Yeah, he needs to let us go, but he's a Christian. He'll let us in. <laughs> yeah, the last podcast had me rolling about that. My Sox Summer, you got to take all of our 108 wealth and reopen it. Yeah, well, you know, it was run by a guy who was kind of he was, he was kind of shady. So uh, he did some other stuff. I, 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 someday we'll talk about it. But yeah, that was yeah, the guy that ran the restaurant, uh, like for chef, not chef. Yeah. But the guy that was oper- the operating partner of the group 
was uh yeah he was shady as fuck man like he was uh he was a very shady guy he was a professional baseball player for a while he was a shitty guy right, so. <laughs> we'll talk about it we'll talk about it no big deal um but, but yeah. my guy though that i would be very hesitant to allow in the house mostly because of his decision making abilities is uh white sack state we i could not have white sack Dave in that house <laughs> The man cannot remember his phone. God knows what he's going to bring home. He's an attractive gentleman. He can pick up some girl at Babe Strip Club or the girls or the Alaskan Bush Company. Or yeah, I've been there. We did that one. We're right back to the house. We wake up. We got no kidney. We got, we're got missing our wallets. <laughs> Wally's washed and multiple gold chains are gone. It would just be an insane. It would be total insanity, and it would be all white back days fault, and he would just be made fun of, and we would never be reimbursed. <laughs> hey, a, I almost got the beard almost as high as him, but it's coming in. <laughs> Mighty thick, like like white sock dudes. But I know he goes out there. I, I ran into him like I think two years ago. We were out there. I was I got one of those Rick Hahn shirts from him, and I was trying to hunt his ass down like the president, but. <laughs> I finally linked up with him and got my shirt from him. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. But yeah, we might have to we might have to check his credentials before he comes in. We'll see. Yeah, yeah he can't stay with us. He still can't stay with us. <laughs> he's a good guy. He'll give him a beer or two, but he's not allowed to stay in the house. He's a roommate no. that drinks your drinks and eats your food and doesn't give you any money. No, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, the Alaskan Bush uh, Company. We've been there before. We ran into uh Frank Thomas. <laughs> no, not Frank Thomas. <laughs> and the eugenics. No, uh, Jared Weaver came out fucked up. It was like closing time. The lights turned on. We kicked everybody out, right? So I was out front having a cigarette, waiting for uh, all my rest of my buddies to come outside. And the dude, I turned around to see if my buddies were coming. And Jerry Weaver like bumps into you. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, that's Jerry Weaver. And my buddy, the angel fan, had an extreme heart on. I don't know if it was from his lap dance at the end or <laughs> <laughs> He was like, oh, shit. He's like, Scott, it's Jared Weaver. And I'm like, yep. And I'm like, he's like, go see if you can talk to him and take a picture with him or chop it up with him. And he's like, I was like, oh, man, I got to pitch tomorrow, guys. And fucking, and sure as shit, we went to that game. And he pitched the next day, and he was fucking tossed. <laughs> they, were, they were bringing him, like, they were bringing Long Islands after Long Islands. That dude was going hard in the paint. <laughs> so that's, like, another key uh, plus of being out there in Arizona. There's so many ball players. Current, former, all at the one time. You go anywhere, you're going to run into some people. That's what I was just looking up, Scott, to see where B.B. Jones stripped at when she was in Phoenix, and it doesn't tell me where it was, so I'm not exactly oh. sure where it was at. <laughs> you got to work on your Googling skills, son. I just did. I went to Wikipedia, which you all are welcome because I donated $3.16 <laughs> so it can still be around, and it is not coming up. It just says stripper in Phoenix, Arizona. And she has been a featured dancer since then. I'm really bummed out. It doesn't tell me that she was either at the Alaskan Bush Company, La Girls, or Babe. I, I I don't know, man. So Scott, how about you? Who's who's not allowed in 108 House? When we when we get this big house together, who's not allowed in? Who are you who are you skeptical mm. of? Hmm. I mean, I met I met I'm out here on the West Coast, and I've met my fair share of White Sox Twitter personalities in person. But ah, uh, man. I'm not gonna turn anybody down. Fuck it. They can all come for a little minute, but staying in the house, I don't know. Might have to be exclusive shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thing three is a question right. from us. And I I don't know oh a lot of your proclivities, Scott, but I do know one proclivity, and it's you like to go to bars and drink and hang out and have a good time. So this question is Absolutely. for you and the group. Let's say the four of us are going out tonight, and we're going to go to a neighborhood bar, a hole in the wall, a dive bar, what they call it nowadays, but we would call it like a corner tap. You're looking yeah. to wager a couple bucks on some barroom game. Which barroom game are you going to huddle up to and play? Oh, it's got to be. It has to be the uh, beer pong. Man. And <laughs> <laughs> when I uh, – before me and my, me and my wife – oh, the cat's, cat's making a cameo. There you go, beef. I saw I saw your cat, and then earlier your dog walked by. Yeah, I got a little pug named Bubbles, and that's uh, my wife's new cat. She just got. Oh uh, yeah, see, I see it running back out. Yeah, it has like a little bobcat tail. Huh? It's a little stub. I don't know where she's. It's a little nub. A little nub. 
But uh, yeah, where were we? Shit, I got too excited about the cat running by. Uh, beer pong. Pussy will do that. <laughs> yes, beer pong. Beer pong will have to be my choice, man. Like I said, I, I played beer pong so much growing up, so that's why I feel comfortable up from beer pong in the garage, backyard parties, the tailgate parties, all that. I've, I've had a little folding table for years, so I have to bust it out. I love beer. I've only played beer pong once. Treasy, you were there. It was at a friend's party. We're in the garage. And people are getting ready to play beer pong. I don't, I don't, I never played beer pong, so I'm, I'm just sitting on the side. And our buddy's uncle's like, uh, "Thief, you know, come on, you be on my team. We'll be the old guy team." And you know, you, I said, "I've never played before. I don't know the fuck to play." He's like, "Don't worry about it. It's just." He's like, "You play basketball, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, it's just like basketball. Don't worry about it." It is same thing. And, and me and the uncle, <laughs> well, everyone's fucking ass in the entire whole thing, and I never played this shit before. And the last team we beat for the championship was mad as hell that we had beat them. They were pissed <laughs> off that they had lost to, like, this dumb fuck who never touched beer pong before. That's usually how it goes, man. The rookies, the rookies got the luck or something. Don't, they don't get mind fucking. That's, that's my strong point is mind fucking the opponents. You got to get in their head. And once you get in their head, the game's over. You got it. It's trash talk. It's all out. <laughs> Terese, how about you? I, I got to go darts, man. And, and it's not because I'm good at darts. It's because right. that is the thing I'm least terrible at. When it comes to, like, bar games, I'm awful at all of them. Like, I'm probably the worst billiards player. On oh, Spanish. yeah. I'm right like, behind you. We had we one in my garage growing up. I think I fucking had to replace – I had paid for my dad to replace it, like, two times growing up because I, I tore that shit up every time. I oh. sucked. I mean, I, I feel yeah, like it's like felt it all the time. even playing just like putting the whole stick underneath the felt. Like, I mean, like it's I'm not <laughs> bad. So like, and, and like, what's the other one that like the slide, the shuffleboard or whatever? Yeah, like, I've seen that a couple times at the, right off the table. Like I'm fucking terrible at quarters. I'm bad. Beer pong. I suck. Like darts, maybe I'll hit the board and I can like try. Like that's, that's about as good as I'll get. <laughs> I suck summer. How about you? I would say in college, like years and years ago, I would have went darts. I say nowadays, I would definitely go tabletop shuffleboard. That is, I, I, yeah, I we, right. we played that in uh, in California all the time. So much so that we would leave one bar and go to another bar just to drink and, and uh, play shuffleboard. The the first bar bought a shuffleboard table so we wouldn't leave, so we could just play shuffleboard there. <laughs> And I loved it. And it wasn't, I mean, I was somewhat decent. And I'm sure Slim Mick will be like, you probably fucking suck because you suck at everything you say you were good at. But like, literally, I, I, I think I play pretty well. And uh, yeah, now that would be something that if I'm going to put money on something, that's what I would put it on. I'm right. confident in my abilities in the tabletop shuffleboard. <laughs> there you go. All right, okay, if, I, if I'm going to miss. If I'm going to do this, I, I, I would normally agree with Terezi. I, I prefer darts over all the other games. I feel like I got a fighting chance. And like you were saying, Scott, once you get in the opponent's head, That's like it. then you, it's over, right? Some of these games, and so if darts are like that, if you can get in the opponent's head and talk a little shit, you might be able to get them off the game. But then I was thinking about a little more, Terezi, and I was thinking about like how I am now and like just to even get excited about a game, I need to get into like a real big between the sheets game. Like a game oh. where you could lose like your whole paycheck in the game. Like, you know, you, you, you go, you <laughs> pot it for a middle and, and, you know, it's deuce king and you get the king and, and you, you fuck yourself out all your money. That's the game I want to get in on when I'm, I when I'm there. I didn't know we were playing cards back room at Shinnick. I mean, I didn't, yeah, know. I didn't, I didn't know. know. There's no, no back room click clack or nothing like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> street dice. We're playing some street yeah. dice. Uh, World Series of street dice. <laughs> Ashy Larry walks in. <laughs> I, mean, I think everyone's like Ashy Larry right now from washing their hands like a thousand times a day. You know? Man. <laughs> yeah, hand sanitizer and washing my hands. And I, yeah, my hands are shot. <laughs> Now, Scott, I heard that on the West Coast, because you guys got ahead of the uh, sort of the uh, the shelter in place thing, that yeah. the supply chain's caught up, and now there is toilet paper available for purchase. Because in the Midwest, we're wiping our ass with our hands right now. We got no. Is that bad? <laughs> yeah. Uh, luckily, like we came back from Air that trip from Arizona. And that's the first day we came back. We went to Costco, and like that was like days before the shit hit the fan. 
So luckily, my wife, man, she came through in the clutch. She stocked up on everything. We spent like 600 bucks. We got toilet paper for days, so. <laughs> boy. Yeah, but yeah, in the stores, I went to the store uh, earlier this weekend. Yeah, there's, it's like some off-brand, but there's some toilet paper and some canned goods and bread and stuff starting to come back again. But everything else is back to normal, mostly in the stores. It's just, uh, man, I was, I was at Target yesterday. No fucking peanut butter to be found. Like, no, no peanut, peanut butter. butter. No yeah, I started freaking butter. out when the tortillas started uh, moving the shelves. So I started shit my pants because, man, I was <laughs> <They couldn't. laughs> uh, Garcia and they were running out of tortillas. It was getting scary for me. But luckily, luckily, we're good. We came back in. You're going to have to start making them at home, man. I, 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 Teresa, our aunt used to make homemade, our great aunt used to make homemade tortillas. We need to get back into making them shits because this is tough to find these days. Yeah, be I, make some and send them over to my place. <laughs> <laughs> with some Coronas. With some Coronas. <laughs> and they have a new, I saw a commercial last night where they have the Corona White Claw version now. I don't know if they came out with it. What the hell? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fresca? yeah. I never seen that no, before out here. It's not the Fresca. It's something different. Yeah, a new one. Oh, different yeah, right Fresca. before this shit shut down, Teresa and I were doing the unveiling of the number one seeds, the 108 tourney. We were at Buffalo Wings Rings. And Justin there brought out a, a bucket for uh, – my wife, Mrs. Beef, to try out all the flavors. I know she's a fine connoisseur of the seltzers. She, <laughs> she is. She is. <laughs> that was the that was the day I did a a shot of Malort with the entire Pride crew, right? Yeah, you you bought a yeah. shot for the entire Pride crew, and you're like, let's go over there and do Malort with them. I, I and the well, look on their faces was hilarious. I did first ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I told the waitress. I said, look. I'm buying a shot for anyone who's over 21 at that table, which I thought was like <laughs> three of them. But it was like all of them, apparently. So well, it was a much bigger round than I thought, but uh, which was great because they got the whole table going and like half the table had never done it. So it how, was, how bad is that shit? I've never had it. That's like, so, well, so you know what? I mean, it's, it's got a really bad um, kind of aftertaste to it because it's kind of like it's, it's eating like it's like eating a grapefruit and not knowing that like if you thought a grapefruit was an orange and you bit into it it's like that <laughs> no. it's not, it's you not know, even that good scott <laughs> it's like it's like drinking like have you ever licked a stamp it's yes. like it's like drinking post-it stamp adhesive for the most nah, part that's that's bullshit that's, that's delicious. delicious no that's that's but if you know what's accurate. coming it's not that bad if you if you are aware the aftertaste is going to come at you once you're done you're prepared. However, most of the newbies aren't ready for it. They're just heard that it's bad, right? And then they take it and they're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Oh, you know, then they give you the oh, face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that old better beer commercial. Oh, that <laughs> those, old Keystone, those old Keystone commercials? Yeah, the bitter beer face. <laughs> yeah, I seen uh, that guy, uh, Tom Paints, he posted, he, he bought, he ordered a bottle of it. And I was like, man, for somebody to order it out in Cali, it must, must be pretty good. But I hear everybody talk shit on it. So I, so I was a little curious on what you guys input was on it. Was. It's, it's an acquired it's, taste. It's, it's, not, acquired it's taste. not good. <laughs> it's not, not enjoyable. It's not bad, though. It's no. Bad. It's like that. It's like that shot that you don't really like to do, but your friend bought it for you, so you're like, "All right, I'll do it." You know, like that kind of shit. Down the hatch. All right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, when, we, when I come out there, Treasy, we'll, we'll have to line one up, man. I'm, I'm down. Let's do it. Oh hell yeah! Do a few of them. Got to line a few of them up. All right. Hey, yeah. everybody, let's get in. When you get out here, we gotta go do a tour to Bridgeport of all the bars in Bridgeport, just so you can. Oh man. man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah that'd be beautiful. Yeah, 100%. Some, of that, uh, some of that cheese. Maybe bust out the cheese fountain for me. I don't know. I need some of that, that queso dip that Pete dives in on. I want some of that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get the fountain going, baby. No, no <laughs> doubt. God, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a part of three things. This was a ridiculously uh, crazy conversation. I'm really glad we had. Man, right, thanks for having me. Thank you, Scott. Like said, when you reached out to me, I was super excited. So much love. You guys do your thing. You guys have big things this year. Hopefully we get some baseball. And I hope to see you out uh, at the park this summer. Sounds good. Stay safe, Scott. Scott. We'll talk All right, guys, stay safe. Wash your hands. Peace. <laughs> Peace.